Hello! I used to be an atheist, but inevitably became more of an agnostic, leaning in favoritism towards the possibility of a god. The reason for this was initially presented by the double slit experiment. My mind was blown the moment I started to speculate the possibility of particles having a conscious reaction to us observing them. It also implied that the universe is in a completely different state when it is not being measured. A famous conversation between Einstein and Niels Bohr went like this. I like to think the moon is still there even when I'm not looking at it. To which Niels Bohr disagreed, claiming it does disappear the moment everyone turns away. Turns out, a Northern Irish physicist, John Bell, put the question to the test with a large number of particles, and it turns out Bohr was right. The moon does not exist the moment it ceases to be measured, the moment everyone looks away. Now, after stumbling upon the holographic universe theory initially coined by Herard Thuft, and then having Elon Musk propagate the same notion, um, if you assume any rate of improvement at all, um, then the games will become indistinguishable from reality. So, so given that we're clearly on a trajectory to have games that are indistinguishable from reality, and those games could be played on any set-top box or on a PC or whatever, and they would probably be, you know, billions of such, uh, you know, computers or set-top boxes, it would seem to follow that the odds that we're in base reality is one in billions. The universe being a simulation, I was pretty much set on the notion, the same notion that Vedic texts have been promoting all along, that reality is an illusion. It's crazy to think about, but whenever a glint of doubt hits my mind, I remember how nonsensically woo-woo and magic this world is. I remember, despite how unique and incredible each individual is, we magically end up filtering through the same formulas when it comes to the bigger picture. Moore's Law being an example of that, where innovation doubles every two years. Zip's Law, where the more something is used, algorithmically, the more it will be used. The human condition is incredibly consistent to these laws, and then you have the fact that our consciousness, our thoughts, have been proven to affect the physical world without touch. Singing and speaking to plants affects how they grow. You can cause rice to mold by writing and feeling negative emotions towards them. Dr. Masaru Emoto's coin toss indicating our thoughts can affect probabilities on the world without physical touch. Reinforcing the notion that the law of attraction is real. The Mandela effect where... Here, finish this sentence by Darth Vader. Luke, I am your... Were you going to say father? Well, you're wrong. He told me you killed him. No. I am your father. It is now recorded as, No, I am your father. To which even the original voice actor for Darth Vader is dumbfounded by. When I first saw the dialogue that said, Luke, I am your father, I said to myself, He's lying. I wonder how they're gonna play that lie out. He himself can't believe that he said that. He believes it's Luke, I'm your father, but when he listens to the original tape, it's completely different. There are countless piles of evidence reinforcing the Mandela effect, where recorded bits of history, from the Bernstein Bears to the biblical verses, they are changing. Documented history is changing as we speak. Our history, the details comprising it, are changing. Even if it's minuscule, there's tangible evidence that it's there and nobody knows why. This is not a fairy tale. This universe is way too magical to be real, and everyone from physicists to the mystics imply it's some crazy computer game we're messing around in. Even Elon Musk. But if that's the case, who created this game? I don't know, but I have three possibilities I'd love to share with you. The first possibility and most common would be an omniscient watching over us. An all-powerful creator who created us and this hologram. Now, the analogy I would use to understand this kind of god would be a StarCraft game developer, playing StarCraft him or herself. Now, pretend you are a StarCraft player. All these characters under your control move and do whatever you want them to do. To give them free will, you assign an artificial intelligence to them. Now these units can play and move on their own, based upon what makes most sense to them, most sense to their AI. 
That AI could be classified as what humans call free will. Now the interesting thing about this is, is that each unit in the game is actually God. Much like a computer being different from the next, the electrons powering it are God. Our consciousness is God and through it, through our unique bodies, unique environments, despite being so physically different in reality, we are all the same, all one God. The same way water can filter out so differently based upon the filter, due to our unique environments and genetics, we filter out differently despite actually being the same. The second possibility is that each of us are unique from the beginning, that we are all unique souls and we are all jacked into a computer. Our consciousness has been uploaded into a simulation and like World of Warcraft, we are all playing with each other in the same world. This would imply many gods, that we again are all gods, or it would simply imply that we are higher tier beings from another civilization, nothing compared to the one we live in now, pretending to be primitive. Now with all the people having flashbacks of their past lives, sure they could be delusional, but often the cases involve precise data into the lives of the deceased, leaving me a little bewildered overall. I could definitely see this one being the case, a soul from a higher dimension or reality playing a game over and over again. The yogis would call it reincarnation. Or again, it could just be an illusion where we actually still sprout from one god. You know what could really be crazy about this theory though? What if instead of being a soul, you are just this brain in a jar. You are hooked up to a computer playing this game attempting to escape death by whatever means possible, even by means of trapping oneself in an illusion. <laughs> Who knows, right? The third possibility is that this is God. The universe itself, from every speck of matter to the empty space, the dark energy, it is a living, breathing creature. Now, physicists calculate that one cubic centimeter of dark energy measured in Planck lengths possesses more energy than all the matter in the universe combined. Maybe the incongruencies or waste produced by dark energy is where we come from. Those incongruencies created hydrogen, and hydrogen collected in masses together by gravity, churning and causing friction, exploding into stars with the hydrogen in that furnace would become other elements, thus the building blocks for life. Dark energy is the empty space before you. The vacuum once you take the atmosphere strung within it away. It is space. Now what's most interesting about this theory is that it would probably be the one that science likes the most because then the meaning of God would become synonymous with mother nature. It would be something we could actually measure and tamper with despite not really knowing what it was. If true, it would be the God science was worshipping with research and study all along, with questioning. But instead of calling it God, a true scientist would call it the unknown. But then again, physicists now questioning the entire premise of dark energy and if it actually exists at all, maybe I'll have to disregard that notion altogether. Maybe not. Who knows? Here's a plot twist. What if all of those are true? If simulation is becoming more and more advanced today, to the point where we will not be able to differentiate between it and reality, Who's to say the reality strung above ours is not a simulation as well? This would imply that there are many simulations and at this present moment we are all unique souls jacked into a computer. But if you travel back to base reality through enough simulations back to the original source, where it all began, where it all came from, there would be one lonely god who found a way to play. Through us, he leaves wholeness and experiences love, fear, hatred, happiness, anxiety, infatuation, friendship, betrayal, etc. All the forms of expression us sentient beings feel. And to create an element of surprise through that experience, he created a universe. Our universe that creates itself through randomness and maybe dark energy, letting it unfurl through probability, a universe that unfurls through the bizarre nature of quantum physics, a universe that seems so consistent to the world of direct consciousness and touch, sight, taste, temperature, yet the moment we glance down that rabbit hole, all reason leaves. And what if this is all just God playing, and higher dimensions are unique souls influenced by their genetics and environments then jacked into our more vulnerable reality, all strung within a living, breathing universe based on randomness to keep things interesting? It's interesting to think about 
and a part of me believes truth in this, but even if you don't, even if you hold a complete and utter skepticism, that is okay, and I commend you for your realist perspective, for that is where scientists are born. But I am certain, as you glance down the rabbit hole with an open mind, you will stumble towards what you were digging away from the entire time. Here's one thing we can all take away from this, if anything. This is your journey. To you watching, this is your unique and individual experience. Whether you are a warrior or a healer, trust your journey. And trust yourself above all. Believe in yourself, because in this crazy random world, despite your pain, despite the tremendous suffering correlated with the human condition, as your feet move, as I believe there is something listening to our voice, listening to your heart with an open ear and unconditional love. Whether it is God, a higher tier being, or the universe itself, no. If it loves itself, you being an expression of it are loved the same. To the lovers and the warriors of this world, keep laying the yellow bricks to your road and keep walking forward believing this crazy world holds enough magic for you. And until next time, Peace.